So in this video, we'll talk about the Toral Heisenberg inequality. Um, and uh, I remind you that previously we introduced the Heisenberg uncertainties for two physical properties and their associated linear operators. So we had uh, the product of the dispersions of these operators was greater than or equal to um, a combination that involved the commutator between the two operators. So of course, if the two operators have a zero commutator, then the product of d phi um, for a and d phi of b could be as small as zero, and that's going to be the case when or state phi is a, is a mutual eigenvector of the operator a and the operator b. Um, d phi or delta phi of a is defined as the dispersion, um, and I remind you that that has nothing to do with a measurement uncertainty, but rather that is the um, the inherent uncertainty in the state phi um, of finding an actual value for A um, and taking the difference with the expectation value of finding uh, a value of A for that, uh, for that state phi. Now this is uh, an expression that only works for two physical properties, two linear operators. Um, and we actually introduce time evolution a little bit differently, not necessarily as a linear operator, um, even though we did introduce the, um, the energy measurement as a linear operator, the Hamiltonian. So to come up with a, a similar temporal Heisenberg inequality, um, we'll treat this a little bit differently, um, although we will introduce that at some point later on with the, with the Hamiltonian. So let's start from just one physical property A, and let's look at, uh, at the time derivative of the expectation value for a state phi. So um, the expectation value of A for state phi is, is an object that depends on the time. Uh, so uh, um, if phi depends on time, then A, expectation value of A will depend on the time. So our T do not go inside the operator because we're not measuring a time, we're not looking at the time derivative of a time dependent operator, but we're looking at the time dependence of an operator um, where the time dependence is induced due to the time dependence and the time evolution of this phi. So if we look at the time derivative um, and we just uh, use the time uh, differential expression of the time evolution equation, then we'll find that we can write this um, you know, just using the derivative first on the, on the bra and then the derivative on the cat side, we end up with um, an expression that has our, our commutator of the physical property A with the Hamiltonian in it. So the time derivative, the total time derivative of the expectation value with the time dependence introduced through the evolution of our state phi is given by 1 over ih bar where we then have the um, expectation value of the commutator of A and h, an expectation value with respect phi. That is what is called the Ehrenfest theorem. So um, the time evolution of expectation values for an operator A and then uh, state phi is given by um, the expectation value of the commutator with the Hamiltonian. Okay, good. So let's, let's keep that in mind. Um, and let's now look back at our uh, first formulation of the Heisenberg inequalities for two linear operators A and B. But let's use for B the Hamiltonian. So we'll use for A the same A that we've used to derive Ehrenfest theorem, but now we'll use for B the Hamiltonian H. So the dispersion or the product of the dispersion of the Hamiltonian and the dispersion of this operator A will have to be larger than or equal to um, the, uh, the expectation value or the absolute value of the expectation value of that operator A and the operator H. That's just the expression of the Heisenberg inequalities. Now we can use Ehrenfest's theorem to write this commutator in terms of the time derivative of uh, the expectation value of A for the, for the state phi. So uh, we've already introduced here something that then depends on this time derivative. So now let's take it a step further by introducing a characteristic time, tau, which again depends on, on the state phi, depends on uh, the operator that we're trying to measure. And this is the characteristic time that describes, uh, we want to describe um, the, the time scale over which the operator A has an expectation value that changes over its dispersion. So um, the dispersion is uh, the, the inherent 
uh, variation in A between different different measurements, if you will, or the standard deviation that different measurements will will give you based on the fact that uh, not necessarily in an eigenvalue of A. Um, and so what's the time scale over which the operator will have an, or the expectation value of that operator will, will um, change by that amount. So that's a characteristic time scale that we can introduce. Um, as it happens, we'll introduce this here as one over tau. Um, and then we uh, take the absolute value of our um, time derivative and divide by our dispersion um, delta of A. Okay, that gives us our time characteristic time tau. And now if we introduce that back in what we found based on the Heisenberg um, inequalities, then we find that uh, the dispersion of our Hamiltonian multiplied with this characteristic time will have to be larger than um, or equal to h bar over 2. So this is now the temporal Heisenberg inequality. So um, keep in mind that this is a different expression than um, the Heisenberg inequality that we obtained for two linear operators, uh, and it looks a little bit different. There's, it, I mean, both of them are of course products of, uh, of what we would think about as uh, a dispersion in a Hamiltonian, um, and then a dispersion maybe um, in in some time quantity. Um, but it actually means something quite different. So if we look at the interpretation, um, so this is related not to or how we measure things, but it's related to the properties of the system. Here the dispersion is related to the properties of this state phi. Um, if we pick for phi an eigenstate, then we will find that uh, dispersion of the Hamiltonian for phi is equal to zero. Um, if we pick for phi a state that is not an eigenstate, then the dispersion will be larger. So it depends on the state of the system, not on the measurement technique. Same thing for this characteristic time. That is a characteristic time that depends on the state of the system. It doesn't depend on the particular measurement technique. So those are inherent to the quantum system and to the state phi. They're not uh, related to the measure technique. So the heuristic interpretation or the heuristic way of writing this as the uncertainty in E times the uncertainty or the time needed to measure this that is not really a correct interpretation. This has nothing to do with uncertainties in energy. It has something to do with the fact that we're not necessarily in an eigenstate of energy. And it has nothing to do with the time required to measure the energy, but it has something to do with the characteristic time scales in which we would expect measurements of the energy to have different expectation values. So this DE D tau or DE D theta, DE D time um, way of writing this is somewhat ambiguous and, and obscures this notion here. Um, so let's look at that for two examples. Um, again, let's look at stationary states. Uh, it's a little bit tricky because we end up with a, um, a characteristic time that's infinite because we divide by our dispersion in the Hamiltonian and that one is zero because we're in an eigenstate uh, of the, the Hamiltonian. Um, but the more interesting case is, of course, when we apply this to unstable states. In that case, we can write this as the, uh, the width of the resonance that we're describing, of the unstable state that we are describing, multiplied with the decay lifetime um, will be equal, uh, approximately equal to 1. Uh, so there's some h-bar um, coefficients that have been divided out there already. So those are... Um, th that's one of the, the useful expressions where this, uh, um, where this temporal Heisenberg inequality um, will be of use. And, and one of the, um, I, I suspect that one of these things will uh, probably come back, in particular the unstable states will come back in, uh, the, um, in the homework assignment to, uh, to think about that a little bit more next week. Okay, and that's all for, uh, for this video about the temporal Heisenberg inequality. So keep the temporal Heisenberg inequality separate from um, the interpretation of the, um, the Heisenberg inequalities between two regular linear operators, because there is, of course, no, uh, let me not point to this ambiguous notation, but there is, of course, no um, linear operator that corresponds with, with characteristic time. There's, there's no operator B that would give us that uh, characteristic time, even though we can use this operator A um, as the Hamiltonian. Okay, um, that's it for this video.